All right, our next talk is from our trainees, Colton Strong. Colton is a PhD student from Dr. Divine Lab, and he's going to talk about the expression of exogenous proteins in donor platelet treated with lipid nanoparticles. Thank, Thank you, you, Colton. Is the uh, mic good? Yes. And then just uh, control this. Just pressing this on back. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for the introduction, Parveen. Uh, today, I'm really excited to be back in person, and it's great to see everybody from the CBR and uh, elsewhere today. Uh, today, I'm excited, as Parveen mentioned, to share our progress in developing LNP engineered platelets as a next generation uh, cell therapy for hemorrhage control. As I'm sure you all are aware of, uh, platelets are one of the most common cell therapies transfused in conditions of thrombocytopenia. Uh, circulating and transfused platelets detect regions of vascular damage where they activate and bind to one another to generate a platelet plug, defining primary hemostasis. Platelets also have another role in this process, and that is to localize the coagulation cascade, ultimately generating that final clot that stops the bleed. Now, in the context of our project here, uh, in cases of severe trauma after somebody sustained uh, severe injury, such as during a car accident or after a gunshot wound, uh, there can be severe loss of blood, and that necessitates the transfusion of platelet products to replace the pl uh, platelets that have been lost. However, there's a major problem in cases of severe bleeding. Uh, in conditions of acidosis and hypothermia, those two features can have an impairment on platelet function, both the circulating and any transfused product, uh, platelets. And so that means despite the administration of a standard platelet unit, there can still be an uh, inability to control the bleed. And so the major project goal in our lab is to take these standard donor platelet units and enhance them. We want to functionally enable them to have new abilities to overcome some of the limitations that are present during severe trauma. And so how are we doing this? Well, we believe that transfection, which is a way to engineer desired cellular attributes, is a way that we can somehow enhance these platelets to treat bleeding. And this brings us to our core hypothesis, which is that we can leverage recent advancements in lipid nanoparticle technology, which has enabled uh, applications in the COVID-19 vaccines, and is an effective way to deliver mRNA into target cells specifically. And so what we want to do is take mRNA encoding procoagulant enzymes or anything that can modulate platelet function and deliver them using this lipid nanoparticle platform into platelets to achieve expression of protein and therefore modification. So the two stories or the two phases of this project that I'll be sharing with you today are first phase one, which is how we actually optimize our lipid nanoparticles for specifically engineering platelets. And then phase two, which is data that many of you have not seen yet, is how we actually tested these LNP engineered platelets for retained function. And uniquely today, I'm excited to share some of our in vivo data, although I'm sure many of you have seen a lot of our in vitro data. And so jumping right into it, with the, the lipid nanoparticle contains four different lipid components, including notably an ionizable lipid and a structural lipid. And many studies and many re much, a lot of research in the nanomedicine community has focused on optimizing these ionizable lipids to enhance uh, protein expression. And so we believe that we can systematically identify an ionizable lipid and a helper lipid that can increase cell specificity for platelets and increase the levels of protein expression in our platelets. And so how do we test this? Well, our methodology is generally that we take our lipid nanoparticles and we incubate them with our platelets. We had an ionizable lipid library and a helper lipid library. And what we did is we identified the most promising uh, lipid candidates uh, that achieved expression above the dash line, which represents a standard LNP formulation. And then we took the most promising ones and did a combinatorial analysis where we systematically interchanged the ionizable lipid and the helper lipid components. Again, two lipids that enhance cell specificity and expression levels and identified something that we're calling the platelet-specific or platelet-optimized LNP, although there's a ton of additional work that can be done in this space. But armed with this new LNP formulation, we got to enter into our pilot studies in vivo. And I had the unique opportunity with, a, with two of my other colleagues to go to San Antonio, Texas, and where we were at the Institute of Surgical Research, and we did these in vivo pilot studies. Interestingly, Dr. Katie Badio, our pictured on the right, is holding the first ever LNP-engineered uh, transfusion unit that went into animals. 
And so then all you need to know from this model is that it's well established and it involves taking a kidney bleed time at the beginning to ensure that the animal's uh, bleeding parameters are very similar and then uh, allow the animals to bleed, at which point either our control platelet units or our LNP engineered platelet units are transfused into the rodents. We then take a final kidney bleeding time and this is our indicator of platelet efficacy. And the data I'm excited to share today, although there's a lot of it, uh, is that uh, when we look at kidney bleeding time and blood loss as our two metrics of F in vivo efficacy, we can see at baseline there's no difference between the animal's bleeding uh, parameters. But when we look at post-transfusion of our engineered units or the control units, there's also no significant difference, suggesting that there was retained efficacy in our LMP engineer platelets. One of the more interesting parameters that we also looked at was the circulation of these LNP engineered platelets in vivo. And the way we did this is we used a platelet-specific platelet marker and a marker of LNP engineering. Depicted on the screen right now are the control platelets, and so we have our standard platelet unit and then also our post-transfusion whole blood. And anything in the right, upper right quadrant represents the co-localization of these two markers or a marker of transfection. And as you can see, when we look at our nanoluciferase engineer platelet unit, we can see that we get about 20% transfection efficacy in our platelet unit. And excitingly, when we look at the blood of the animals after transfusion, we can see that we still have retained signal coming through in that right quadrant, suggesting that, in fact, our LNP engineered platelets uh, did circulate. And so this is pretty exciting. In, in phase one, we've identified platelet-optimized lipid nanoparticles. In phase two, although I didn't show, we have shown both in vitro and in vivo data that supports that these platelets, after exposure to lipid nanoparticle particles, still retain their efficacy. And now we're on the phase three, and I'd be happy to talk to anybody after this or any uh, member of the platelet engineering team uh, about what we are doing to change function. And this is really the missing piece to this project, is how we actually are going to change this, the platelet function so that we can better control hemorrhage or in other uh, disease indications. And with that, there's tons of people to thank. This is officially an inter-institutional project happening both at the University of British Columbia and at the Versity Blood Research Institute. So I'd like to thank everybody involved in those projects and all those in the Divine Lab. I'd also like to thank our collaborators at the Institute of Surgical Research down in San Antonio, and then everybody on the platelet engineering team. Uh, without them, this project would not be moving forward at the speed it is. So thank you. Is that someone there? Thank you so much, Carlton, for the wonderful talk. If you have any question for Carlton, please raise your hand. Uh, thank you. Uh, Jose Lopez from uh, Seattle. Um, what so that nano, a couple of questions. A nano look, was that the delivery of a protein or delivery of an mRNA? I apologize, that wasn't clear. That was delivery of an mRNA encoding the nano luciferase enzyme. Do you have any idea how much expression you got? Uh, we're working on figuring out uh, more robust ways to quantify that. Uh, there's not too many uh, publications out there that have some sort of uh, standard curve for nanoluciferase expression, but one of the things we're doing uh, in addition to our studies inc is including this standard curve so that we can uh, quantify it, and very loose calculations are suggesting that we're in the low picogram amount, um, but we need, to, we need to keep working on that. And, and can you tell us a few of the targets that you want to express in platelets and whether those are secreted or membrane proteins? Yeah, what, what we really want to uh, try and ex express are uh, secreted pro uh, proteins at this point. And uh, some of our target uh, are, we have a huge whiteboard full of all sorts of targets we want to express. And I feel like every time we attend some of these uh, symposiums or seminars that we now keep adding to that list. So uh, we're looking first at very small peptides. So anything that uh, will modulate uh, uh, coagulability at the initial stages of coagulation. But uh, excitingly, we're looking at uh, expressing clot stabilizing peptides or antifibrillinolytic peptides uh, as initial proof of concept that we can uh, engineer function. So actually, I'll ask you another question. So would, would those peptides have to be released in an activation dependent manner to localize to a clot? Yeah, so that's uh, some of our mechanistic studies that we're uh, just getting started on, uh, is figuring out uh, uh, if it's uh, how the, the protein will actually be secreted, if it will be secreted, because that will be absolutely paramount to any sort of uh, success of, of the platelet engineering as a therapy. Uh, and some of our initial studies suggest that somehow, although we're not aware of the mechanism, we are getting protein that is released into the surrounding media. So 
Uh, not sure on the, the specific mechanism, whether it's through any sort of alpha granule loading and release, um, but we hopefully we'll have some more data for you next symposium. It's more like a it's more like a confirmation question. Um, so, is your LMP targeting to place it specifically, or targeting to a specific organ? and then induce generation of the expression in the platelet. Yeah, so uh, all of our engineering is ex vivo, so we graciously receive uh, platelets from uh, the Canadian Blood uh, Services, uh, and so we get a bag of uh, platelets, a platelet unit, and so all of our uh, LMP engineering is done ex vivo, uh, so we have not done any in vivo targeting uh, yet, but uh, it's a good question. Hello. Hello. Uh, I have a question about whether you remove the, uh, the nanoparticles from the platelets prior to transfusion into animals and eventually humans, because these, uh, these uh, LNPs, maybe they would have off-target effects if you transfuse them together with the platelets uh, into, into a, a, a living organism. Yeah, Stephen, that's a great question. And uh, uh, when we actually are producing the units for transfusion, there's a number of wash steps and uh, resuspension steps after the actual transfection. So we do believe that we're getting rid of the uh, majority of the LNPs prior to transfusion. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Is there any more questions? Please join me and thank Carlton for the wonderful talk. Thank you. Thank you.